Harper Audio presents Sully, My Search for What Really Matters, by Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger, with Jeffrey Zaslow, read by Chesley Sullenberger and Michael McConaughey, previously published under the title Highest Duty. This book is dedicated to my wife, Lori, and my daughters, Kate and Kelly. You are the three most important people in my life, and I love you more than I can express in words. This book is also dedicated to the passengers and crew of Flight 1549 and to their families. We will be joined forever because of the events of January 15th in our hearts and in our minds. One, a flight you'd never forget. The flight lasted just a few minutes, but so many of the details are rich and vivid to me. The wind was coming from the north, not the south, which was unusual for that time of year, and my wheels made a distinct rumbling sound as they rolled across the rural Texas airstrip. I remember the smell of the warm engine oil and how it drifted into the cockpit as I prepared to take off. There was also the smell of freshly cut grass in the air. I have a clear recollection of how my body felt, this heightened sense of alertness, as I taxied to the end of the runway, went through my checklist, and got ready to go. And I recall the moment the plane lifted into the air, and, just three minutes later, how I would need to return to the runway, intensely focused on the tasks at hand. All these memories are with me still. A pilot can take off and land thousands of times in his life, and so much of it feels like a speeding blur. But almost always, there is a particular flight that challenges a pilot, or teaches, or changes him, and every sensory moment of that experience remains in his head forever. I have had a few unforgettable flights in my life, and they continue to live in my mind, conjuring up a host of emotions and reasons for reflection. One took me to New York's Hudson River on a cold January day in 2009. But before that, perhaps the most vivid was the one I've just described. My first solo flight, late on a Saturday afternoon at a grass airstrip in Sherman, Texas. It was June 3, 1967, and I was 16 years old. I hold on to this one and a handful of others as I look back on all the forces that molded me as a boy as a man, and as a pilot. Both in the air and on the ground, I was shaped by many powerful lessons and experiences, and many people. I am grateful for all of them. It's as if these moments from my life were deposited in a bank until I needed them. As I worked to safely land Flight 1549 in the Hudson, almost subconsciously, I drew on those experiences. For a few months, when I was four years old, I wanted to be a policeman, and then a fireman. By the time I was five, however, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life, and that was to fly. I never wavered once this possibility came into my head, or more precisely came over my head, in the form of jet fighters that crisscrossed the sky above my childhood home outside Denison, Texas. We lived by a lake on a sparse stretch of land nine miles north of Perrin Air Force Base. Because it was such a rural area, the jets flew pretty low, at about 3,000 feet, and you could always hear them coming. My dad would give me his binoculars, and I loved looking into the distance, to the horizon, wondering what was out there. It fed my wanderlust. And in the case of the jets... What was out there was even more exciting because it was coming closer and closer at a very high rate of speed. This was the 1950s, and those machines were a lot louder than today's fighters. Still, I never came across people in my part of North Texas who minded the noise. We had won World War II not long before, and the Air Force was a source of pride. It wasn't until decades later, when residents near air bases began talking about the noise, that pilots felt the need to answer the complaints. They'd sport bumper stickers that said, Jet Noise, The Sound of Freedom. 